Hey guys, I'm CG Smoothie, and I've participated in quite a few week-long game jams since I started Unity in May of 2020. Not to brag, but I've placed pretty highly in most of the ones I've done. So I decided I'd give myself hard mode and do the big boss of all game jams, a three-day Ludum Dare. Spoiler warning for the game ahead, so if you haven't played it yet, check it out in the description below and please rate it for the Ludum Dare rating period. If you're watching this after the Ludum Dare rating period, please check it out anyway. The Ludum Dare theme this year was deeper and deeper, and I immediately thought of a game with moles as the main character. Maybe a platformer where you had to go deeper into a mole's burrow to get something? I talked to my Discord about it and decided on a title before I had even written a line of code. Guacamole. I didn't know anything about the game I was about to make other than I was going to be a mole and I wanted to retrieve guacamole. I made a simple platformer script. I decided to add an extra hurdle to my already cramped 3 day time frame and chose to work on a 32 bit resolution pixel art. Before this I had only worked on 16 bit pixel art. I think the player character came out pretty cute and I experimented with a couple color palettes before I decided on an earthy brown mole. I added a dynamic camera using Cinemachine which would be a thorn in my side later down the line. I made a couple sprites for a walk animation, an idle animation, and a jump animation for the mole so I could see what I was dealing with. I quickly decided on a secondary movement system to make the game stand out. Since the player was a mole, I could have them dig into the side of the wall and replace the 2D platformer Mario movement system with a grid based Zelda movement system. Incidentally, this was my first time using a grid based movement. Since I was using grid based movement, I decided a tile map system would be the best way to go about level design as it would ha also save time rather than individually making each platform. To fit the title and add some variation, I made one of the sprites have an avocado as one of the rocks in the tile map. Then I added more animations for digging in the background grid movement state and gave the mole a spoon while digging. Cause everybody digs with a spoon. I added a forward attack and a downward attack to the platform based movement system. By this point I had decided on making this game more of a metroidvania which would sell that burrow look I had set out for the beginning. The downward attack was inspired by my favorite metroidvania, Hollow Knight's Desolate Dive or Descending a Dark Attack. To sell the idea that the player was really in the background, I made some particles using Unity's particle system, follow the grid player with dark squares with low opacity to symbolize the shadow of the wall in front of the player while he was in the wall. This achieved a nice effect. Then I added another animation for the in-between state from platforming to digging and vice versa. This would just have the player go downward into the ground and spawn dirt particles from where he would appear. Now came the first of three enemies. To sell that burrow aesthetic as well as the guacamole title, I decided to make burrow animals fused with Mexican food as the enemies. I thought of making a taco turtle as the first enemy, but I saw this cute art of a taco armadillo and I knew I had to add that instead. I also learned that armadillos live in burrows. I borrowed a little bit of code from my pixel platformer I never got around to finishing, but I did have to rework a lot of it to make the taco dillo work better. I made it so the enemy would turn around when it saw a wall in front of it, and made it so if it saw the player in the way off distance, it would switch to a roll state and go a lot faster towards the player. Day 2 had begun. Because I only had a couple hours of time left, I made a second, stronger version of the taco dillo with more health and the ability to bounce. I made a looping sky texture for an outside area at the start of the game before the mole descended into the depths of the burrow. Now I started working on the actual level. Until this point, I had been using a small box to test the Taco Dillo enemies. I tried making music, but if you've played the current version of the game, you'll know there is no overworld music. I did succeed in actually making a boss fight song, and once I have the time to update the game, I'll add in music and fix other bugs I currently have. I worked on my second enemy in this game, the Nacho Bat. Originally, I had planned on making a stronger form of this enemy too, which would spit cheese projectiles at the player. If I ever make a bigger game around the guacamole, I'll probably add that in. The Nacho Bat used the A-star pathfinding algorithm in case you were curious. I added more tiles to the tile set so I could make more interesting rooms in the level. This included one wide and one tall tiles as well as background elements like a guac bowl and flowers and grass tufts. I added the spoon in the game world as an upgradable item, sort of like the various suit upgrades you could get in Super Metroid. 
I made a title screen, which I repurposed as the logo, as I never got around to making a title screen in the short time I had left. The final day had arrived. I didn't have much time this day because I had school for half of it, but I was going to do as much as I could. I started by integrating the digging and attacks into the spoon upgrade system, so you could only use them once you had acquired the right spoon. I made UI flash up on the screen when the player had obtained an item, saying what you got, what the abilities look like, and how to use it. And I had designed some rooms in the level, but I'll only talk about one of them. That being the tall room seen in almost every Metroidvania I've played. You got the tall room to the left of the Forgotten Crossroads entrance in Hollow Knight, the tall rooms in Metroid games, it seemed like a stable to me. I filled it with plenty of nacho bats and tacadillos and gave it a couple paths branching out away from it. Because of the multiple rooms I had, my Cinemachine confiner was having a weird time blending the cameras, so I eventually just decided to cut out the complex confiner and go with the simple box confiner instead. I added it so the player can look up and down because the rooms were a bit too big and I wanted the player to have the luxury of not having to make too many leaps of faith. I made breakable blocks that would break only if hit with the desolate dive type of attack I made on day one. If the player stood on it, particles would emit, so the player knew for sure that it could be broken. I made some stamina bar UI so the player could know how much time they had before they were forced out of the wall and back into the heat of battle. Moving on to the boss, I decided to make a burrito snake, and with the little amount of time I had left, I'm not sure a snake was the best option for a guy of my animating skills. I experimented with many sizes and poses, and this took forever. If I got the right pose down and size the first time, I might have been able to add a title screen and music in the final jam product. Anyway, I came up with an animating method that used a sort of rig, if you could call it that. A line of five wide pixels I would then skin over and then add the head and tail and tongue. This helped me animate greatly, keeping the proportions and scale with each other, even if it took quite a bit. Like the Nacho Bat, I had, I had to take out a planned attack for the Burrito Snake. I was going to have him pound his tail into the ground, but I just didn't have the time. Maybe if I expand on this concept, I could add that, but for now, he just burrows into the ground and emerges out of one of the walls. The particles I added help the player know where to get out of the way to keep the fight balanced. I added spikes, which would hurt the player and send him back to the last piece of ground he touched. Unfortunately, neither the spikes nor the boss hurt the player in the jam build, and I currently don't know why. The code should allow them to, but it doesn't for some reason. Then I added the stamina upgrade in the form of beans. These beans would add an extra second of stamina to your dig. I had three of them throughout the entire level. I added a health bar using the same stamina script. I added checkpoints, which wouldn't work in the jam build because I didn't have a restart button. And then the game jam was over. I submitted with 30 minutes left in the submission period. Like I said, please check out Guacamole in the description and give it a rating. I will add small updates whether or not the game gets support just to fix the bugs and small things I pointed out in this video, but if you guys like it, I might make a bigger game. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this process, and with that, I'll see you guys next time. Later!